Movies about giant snakes are always pretty fun. Whether they be Anaconda, Python, or Boa, there has been a lot of these types of movies made over the last 25 years. All of them getting sequels and eventually being a part of marathons on the sci-fi channel. But there is one movie about a giant snake that I don't think ever got a follow-up. In fact, I don't really think it got much of any recognition back when it came out, or today for that matter. Which is weird because it had a lot of talent both in front of and behind the camera that I think a lot of people would have fun with. This is a movie that I actually think may be one of the least recognized animal attack movies from the 90s, and one that showed up alongside all of those other creature features from 1999 that, if you've been watching my channel, you guys probably heard me talk about already. King Cobra is a 1999 animal attack movie about a genetically engineered monster snake that has its genes spliced with both a King Cobra as well as a rattlesnake. The movie stars Pat Morita from The Karate Kid as an expert snake wrangler, Scott Hillenbrand as a doctor who apparently also co-directed the movie with his brother, and Casey Fallow as a police chief. There's a few other notable actors in this film, with it also being the final performance of Hoyt Axton, and it even has an Eric Estrada cameo. Now, the funny thing about King Cobra, apart from the monster not just being part King Cobra, happens to be the fact that the movie kind of got mixed up in the animal attack films of 1999, and I never hear anyone mention it like, at all. I'm sure most of you have heard of or seen Lake Placid, Deep Blue Sea, and possibly even Komodo from some of my other videos, but King Cobra kinda got no love. Even less love, actually, than Komodo, believe it or not. Which is interesting, but makes sense once you figure out what kind of movie this actually is. As for the monster itself, Seth, or the gene-spliced cobra slash rattlesnake hybrid that we see in the movie, happened to have been created through special effects work from the Chiodo brothers. Now this is a group of guys whose work you've definitely seen before, with their credits being movies like Critters, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and even the 90s version of Land of the Lost. Now, the snake they created for this movie is gigantic, and you get to see it a lot towards the middle and end of the story, but unfortunately most of the time it looks pretty stiff, and the filmmakers decided to give it stock of Velociraptor scream effects from Jurassic Park instead of creating something new, which is really irritating because this wasn't even that long after Jurassic Jurassic Park came out. I mean, The Lost World was in 97, so just a couple years later, you get this Velociraptor snake thing that's like screaming and really stiff in the woods. There is some cool stuff with the snake, and a lot of the kills in the movie have kind of a comedy flair to them, which I do enjoy. But overall, what you're getting into here is actually much more of a low-budget, goofy film than necessarily something with the awesome power of Lake Placid or Deep Blue Sea. The movie has a very weird plot that involves involves this scientist guy experimenting on stuff and crossbreeding animals when some other crazy guy injects himself with an aggression serum and accidentally blows up the lab. <laughs> no joke, I thought this guy would actually turn into the snake or be revealed as having turned into the snake in the movie because they introduce him in a way that seems to be leaning in that direction, but no, it's just a big old snake that got out of the lab. I don't really know how else to explain this movie except imagine if Jaws took place in the woods and instead of it being about the 4th of July, it's about a beer festival, and instead of a shark hunter, you get Pat Morita as an expert snake handler. This movie's kind of ridiculous when you say it's plot out loud, but uh, it's also filmed and edited in a very strange way, with a particular sequence in the middle where they make a borderline music video out of people making beer and filling up glasses and getting ready for the festival while a giant snake is out there eating people in the woods. Honestly guys, this is a really bizarre product. Generally speaking, the story itself is kind of all over the place and nothing makes much sense apart from the basic we must kill the snake plotline that you've probably already seen before, but the characterizations and acting can also be pretty stiff at times. And sometimes I'm not so sure what tone this movie is going for, but it's not the worst. The standout is definitely Pat Morita as the snake wrangler, who a lot of attention is given to in the movie and he gets to do a lot of fun stuff towards the end. Filmmaking wise though, it can be really silly. There's this scene where he gets bit and you're supposed to believe that his head is like going through some kind of crazy stuff from the venom but it ends up being hilarious because they're clearly just letting him hold the camera and spin around in a circle to try to make us believe that stuff and it's like it's just it's pretty funny
With that being said, it still is, at its core, a movie about a giant snake that attacks people in the woods and needs to be taken down. Honestly, looking back, this seems to be the sole movie that was responsible for being a blueprint of sorts to literally every made-for-TV sci-fi channel movie that would come out back in the 2000s. And I think that's kind of funny, looking back. I know all of those movies tend to blend together in regards to plot and execution, but this does seem to be one of the earliest animal attack films that got copied for that entire channel. Probably the most noteworthy thing about the film, by the way, and this is pretty important. King Cobra is the only movie from that whole 1999 lineup that does not feature any CGI, with the snake and everything else all pretty much being done practically in camera. That sets it pretty far apart from even Komodo, like I said earlier. All in all, if you're looking for one of the least talked about giant snake movies, you may find something to enjoy in King Cobra. There's a lot of fun stuff in there, and while the film is obviously not that great, the novelty of its existence is still pretty fun for people that enjoy this whole animal attack genre. Personally, if I had to rank the films of 1999 that deal with this sort of thing, the best was probably Deep Blue Sea, and then you hop over to Lake Placid, and then you've got Komodo, and right here at the end, we've got good old King Cobra. A giant snake movie with velociraptor screaming sound effects and no computer-generated imagery from that time period with Mr. Miyagi. That's pretty much it. But hey guys, what are all of your thoughts on this movie? Have you seen it, and what do you think about the giant snake? Personally, I think this one is really interesting when compared to pretty much everything else, but that's mainly due to it being a forgotten 90s thriller with an interesting lineup of talent. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.